Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'd like to take you through another poem in the language of the Jew because it seemed as if you were really, really interested in this. The language is early Irish or more precise early Gaelic. So for those of you who've been attending my modern Irish course, you also might be interested in seeing where the language actually originally came from and what it looked like then. Now the poem we're going to look at today is a poem that is said to have been composed by a guy called Amayin Golunver. This guy is a figure who appears in the ancient Irish myths. He's allegedly the person who brought poetry to Ireland. He was one of the sons of Mil of Spain, and the sons of Mil of Spain were actually the first Gaels who came to Ireland. When they came to Ireland, they met people who already lived there, the Tuatha de Danann. And the Tuatha de Danann were defeated by the sons of Mil, who were obviously very powerful, and the country, Ireland, was split with the Tuatha de Danann. And the sons of Mil got the better part of this, they got the top half, so everything above ground, whereas the Tuatha de Danann got everything below ground. So that's now why the fairy mounds and so on, they all know, you know, the caves, they all lead underground because the truth of the Danan were actually the ancient gods. The poem I show you today is what Amelian said, so one of the sons of Mil of Spain, when he first set foot on Irish ground. I thought this would be a, a nice poem for you to do and we're going to cover the first half of it today and I might do the second half with you at a later date. Here's the first part of it and the first thing if you've been following me and looking at the previous video that I did in the ancient language of the Druids is that you already recognize uh, three of the words here from the previous lesson. They are of course the words gaeth, wind, and the word darf, stag, and the word grene. That was the genitive of the noun sun. You know, if you have been looking at the previous poem, then these three words you already know. So that's great. And of course, they're nouns. And as you can see, the structure of the poem is quite simple. It all begins with something that's am, which is incidentally the verb, because in the Celtic languages, the sentences begin with a verb. So there's always the same verb, followed by quite a lot of nouns. So this is actually quite an easy poem structurally and it's quite beautiful. Let's look at those three words again to begin with, just by way of repeating. We have Gaius, that's wind, we have Dav, that's stag, and we have Grine, which is the genitive singular of Grian, which means of the sun. If you remember from the last time, the way we do it is we highlight the parts that we already know. So the first one is wind, the second one is stag, and the third one is of the sun. Already looking quite a bit better than when it was all black. So three words you already know. Let's go through the rest of the nouns then. And as you can see, most of these words, as I said in this poem, are actually nouns. So quite straightforward. So let's go through the nouns and their meaning. The first one is shek, that's hawk. The second is tound, is wave. And then we have form, that's sound. And we have deer, which becomes deer in modern Irish teardrop. Last one, and that's a little bit complicated. It's needn't, it really is didn't, with one of these sort of initial things that we've already come across that Celtic languages like to do, where they change the beginning of particular words for grammatical reasons that we don't have to worry about, or you don't have to worry about anyway, where we're not quite sure what it means. It either means combat or it means antler, but it definitely is something martial having to do with fighting, you know, like a stag that fights. Here are the words again, der, and der meant, of course, teardrop. You remember what didn't was? That was that strange word that we're not quite sure about and it meant either combat or antler, that's right. Fuam is what? Sound, of course. Sheik, that's one of my favorite words actually in, in ancient Irish because it's onomatopoetic, which means that the word it already sounds a little bit like the word it means, you know, you have to imagine, I mean, what sound does a hawk mean? So sort of the swooshing sound, so sheik, brilliant. So that's the hawk. You won't forget that one again. And we have tongue, that's wave. So let's try them again so that you really recognize them. Fuam was the sound. Tirend, remember that one, the strange one, combat antler. Shake, that's right. Hawk, absolutely. Tir, indeed, 
its teardrop and Ton is the one of the wave. That's right. So very good. Let's look at some other nouns now. As I said, lots of nouns there, but you're doing well. You know, we have Mara, again, a genitive form from Mwid and Mwid is the C. Again, with these sort of strange initial changes, Mwid comes from Mwid, again, C. So that's great. We have that already. Tresan is a stormy sea. I mean, a country that's surrounded by the sea would have different names for the sea, right? So not surprising. It has here Mwid, which is the more general word for sea, and Tresan, which is the stormy sea. Nile is a cliff from all. And we have Tir, which is the word for land. So let's look at them again. Oil was, that's right, cliff. Tresan, stormy sea. Muid was the other word, of course, for sea. And Mara, that's right, of the sea. So the genitive singular also having to do with sea, of course. And Tir, which is land. One more time, just so that you really know the words. Muid, yes, sea, Tir. Oil is the cliff, Tresen, another one, remember the stormy sea, and Mara, that's the genitive of the sea. Excellent. Let's stick them in here. Again, green are the ones that we already know. Here, the first one, Gaeth i, with, or Mara, the sea. Then the second one here is wave, and the third one here is the stormy sea. Next one, Tir, we stick it in, land. Fuem, you remember what it was? That's right, it's the sound. And Mara, of the sea, the sound of the sea. I know I put in the sound of the sea there. It's one of the features of Celtic languages that you don't actually, in that genitive construction, it's there, it's implied. So it really means the sound of the sea. Then Dav, we had, we remember this combats and antlers, Sheig. Remember that one is the sound that the hawk makes exactly. And in Nile is on a cliff. In a cliff, we're going to see where it is. And then we have tear is, remember that one actually? It was the teardrop, right? And the teardrop of the sun. Let's look at it. It's already beginning to look pretty good, I think. We have wind, the sea, wave of the stormy sea, and land, sound of the sea, stag, something, combats or antlers. I and mean, it could both be that. I mean, stags do tend to be quite martial. Hawk and cliff, teardrop of the sun. Beautiful. And very little is left in black. So let's quickly go through there. I've put it into different colors here. So what's left are the verbs, which are essentially just one verb, the first at the beginning, as I said. Then we have numerals and prepositions. They're in black. And in blue, we have the adjectives, coin. Excellent. So let's let's look at how we do here. We start off with our adjectives, which is coin, beautiful or fair. The second one is the um which is, I am. Isn't that great? Actually, it has nothing to do with English, in case you're wondering. It just happens to look exactly like that. And in modern Irish, that form has completely disappeared. Now, the next one here is I, and I means in, and following it is this strange mutation, which we call uru. You don't have to worry about, just know that that I does something to the word that follows. And the same for this word, shecht, it's seven, and again, we have Uru following. So let's go through this again. Am was, yes, I am indeed, very easy. Now remember what kind was. Yes, indeed, fair and beautiful. Shecht, the number, remember that? Seven. And I was in. Those weren't that difficult, I think. So let's go through them again quickly. Shecht, seven, kain, beautiful and fair. I, in. And am, um, I am. Great. Let's stick them in. We're almost there, folks. Beautiful is stuck in. Okay, next one. I am. This is looking great. Look, I am something. I am something. I am something. Very simple structure there. Very beautiful poem. And finally, the final two things, the prepositions in and on. And then finally, the seven. And we have a poem. I am wind in the sea, I am wave of the stormy sea in land, I'm sound of the sea, I am stag of seven combats or antlers, I'm hawk in or on a cliff, I'm teardrop of the sun, I'm beautiful. 
this is it literally translated. Obviously, after a literal translation, you're going to do something else, which is you're going to make it now into a proper English, as it were. Because that poem, like it was, wouldn't be right. And I've done it here for you. So there you have the complete poem as it was meant to be. If you actually did a proper translation of it, this is what you have. I am the wind of the, on the sea. I'm the wave of the stormy sea ashore. I'm the sound of the sea. I am the stag of seven combats or antlers. I'm a hawk on a cliff. I'm the teardrop of the sun. I am beautiful. Wow. I love this poem. I think it's absolutely beautiful. I don't care who came up with it. It was very likely not Amagen because he's you know, not a historical figure, but I think it's beautiful enough that it's believable that the person who brought poetry to Ireland would have brought this, would have composed this. It's so simple, deceptively simple, but full of wonderful images. I love it. I hope you did too. I leave you with this picture because that might have been what Amagen saw when he first approached Ireland, crossing the sea and seeing that poem. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little bit about something in the ancient language of the Druids. And if you did, please sign up for my channel and also share this with other people who might be interested in learning a little bit more about Ireland, about the languages of Ireland. Thank you.